Hey guys, welcome back to another video. In today's video, we are going to talk about backup in Jenkins. So there is a very interesting topic in which we learn why do we need backup? What are the types of backup? Full backup, differential backup and incremental backup. And we will try to understand it. In this diagram, you can see what are the difference between all of them. So let's understand why do we need a backup. The purpose of backup is to create a copy of data that can be recovered in the event of a primary data failure. Primary data failure can be a result of hardware or a software, any data corruption or a human caused event such as malicious attack, virus or any kind of malware or an accidental deletion of data. So when also when once you upgrade your server or you upgrade your Jenkins, the backup has to be taken because anything that can go wrong might go wrong. So because of that, you have to take a backup. So let us understand what is a full backup. If you can see on my screen on this side, a full backup is exactly what the name implies. It is a full copy of your entire data set. Although full backups arguably provide the best protection, most of the organization don't use them on a daily basis because they are time consuming and often require a lot of disk or a tape capacity. Because not every organization has the time or storage for the frequent full backups, other types are often necessary. So here you can see on my screen that the entire data set regardless of any previous backup circumstance has to be taken. So this is small, this is again big, this begin and it goes on. So that's how we take a full backup. On the other hand, we have two other backups. One is the differential and other is the incremental one. Let us understand the differential backup. On my screen, you can see that additions and alterations since the most recent full backup. So a differential backup is similar to an incremental backup in that it starts with a full backup and subsequent backups only contain data that has changed since the last backup. So the difference is incremental versus differential backup is that while an incremental backup only includes the data that has changed since the last the previous backup, a differential backup contains all the data that has changed since the last full backup. In order to understand it more, let us talk about incremental backups. So in incremental backup, you can see that additions and alterations since the most recent incremental backup. So you have to take an incremental backup and then after you can take an incremental backup. So incremental backups were introduced as a way to increase backup speed and decrease the storage space that it takes to do a full backup. So incremental backups only back up the data that has changed since the previous backup. For example, suppose uh, that you have created a full backup on Monday and use that incremental backups for the rest of the week. Tuesday's schedule backup would only contain the data that has changed since Monday and not whole data. And Wednesday's backup files would only contain the data that has changed since last Tuesday and so on and so forth. So that's the basic difference between full backup, differential backup and incremental backup. So that you can see on from the screen itself. So here it is shown that it's the first backup, second backup, third backup, fourth backup and fifth backup. And that's how it goes in the types of backup. So I hope you guys have understood it. Now in the demo, we'll see how to take a backup and how do we restore that same backup in Jenkins. So let's get right into the demo. So first of all, create a folder named backup and in any path, any drive you want. Just copy this path because we are going to use it. I have created in my D drive. Then go back to your Jenkins and click on manage Jenkins. Once done, click on manage plugins. Here we are going to download a plugin which will help us in backup. Click on available and type thin backup. There are multiple options available over here, but you have to choose thin backup only because that's what we are looking at. Select it and choose one of these options. I'll choose install without restart. Once done, it will start installing the plugin over here. Let me refresh it, loading plugin extension and restarting Jenkins. So this will take time depending on your internet speed. I'll just fast forward it and save you some time. Let's go back and go to manage Jenkins. Once done, go down and you'll see an option of uncategorized. So this has come only after we have installed thin, thin backup Jenkins. There are three options available over here. Click on settings 
and paste the backup directory path which we copied just now. There are multiple options available here for like full backup and differential backup. If you want to understand it, on your right you can see there is a question mark, click on it and it will tell you that it specifies the execution schedule in cron notation when full backup should be done. So that's how you do it for a full backup. Similarly, for differential backup, click on that sign and then it will specify the execution schedule in a cron notation when a differential backup should be taken. So this is how you do it guys for differential backup. We will not use any of that, we will just go with the regular one. So there are two options that are ticked over here. Wait until Jenkins Hudson is idle to perform a backup and backup build results. That's all. There are multiple options like user content, next build number, etc, etc. Don't do that, we'll talk about them later. Let's just save it and click on backup now. Once done, go back to our folder and you can see there is a full backup folder with a timestamp. You can compare, let me show you on my right. This is the timestamp time stamp that it has taken and all the backup has been taken which we ticked. Let's click on job and you can see all the jobs that we have created over here are now in my backup folder. So this is how you do it guys. Once done, go to nodes and you can see that the agent that we created in a few videos back is also here. Click on the other option, users and you can see there is only one user. Let me show you in my notepad plus plus file. Let me drag it and you can see there is one. Let me expand it. Yeah, so there is only one user over here. That's all guys. So this is how you do it and it's very easy and very basic step to do it. Now let me show you how it differs from the different kind of a backup and what needs to be done if there is another backup that's coming your way. So let's go to settings again. Let's scroll down and select move old backup to zip files. So now new backup will be taken and the older one will be moving to zip file and click on backup plugins archives so that I can show you. Click on save. Let it refresh, click on backup now and let's go to the folder and you can live, you can see over here, yeah, you can see in front of your eyes that there is a zip folder that is created here with a backup and there is a new backup that has been taken. So this is a new one and you can see there is a plugin folder over here. Let me expand it. Yeah, so there is a new folder called as plugins over here. Let me make a large icon here also. The file is .jpi extension because that's how it's done in case of Jenkins plugin and this was not presented in the previous folder. This backup, yes. So now you have seen that there are two backups here. One is zip, the older one and the newer one is a folder. Now how do we restore it? Click on restore. You can see there is only one option because there is only one backup right now. So what we are going to do? There are two options, restore next build number and restore plugins. Let me show you what it, what does it mean. So if this option is enabled, the next build number will also be restored. But you have to take special care because this may potentially cause a lot of problems because of next build number file. So you have to take note what you are doing over here and do it very carefully. Let me close it. I'll show you the other option of restore plugins. So if this option is enabled, the plugins get restored. But you need an active internet connection because it will download all these plugins into your system and then it will restore. So that's that's the basic need of an active internet connection for this. We're not going to use any of this. We'll just restore it. Once done, it will be restored. So that's the very basic idea of a thin backup. Now you already know the difference between uh, an incremental backup, a full backup and a differential backup. So that's how it done guys in terms of Jenkins backup. So guys, uh, I hope you have understood what we have told you till now. If not, please feel free to comment below and we'll try to address that issue. So thanks guys and I'll see you in the next video.